quick one today with some minor adjustments. Firstly, thanks everyone for your support. If you enjoy these videos, you know what to do. And subscribe too by hitting that button there or whatever button you hit to subscribe to videos. So I watched Goldeneye the other night and after License to Kill, I was just thinking about the gap and how they reintroduced Bond. So let's talk about it. The longest gap in the series was between License to Kill and Goldeneye. It was six years. We're sort of used to long gaps now with the Craig era, but back then it was a long time. They averaged the film every second year back then. And as I touched on my last video, people didn't think Bond was viable in this new era. There was so much talk about, you know, was Bond still relevant with the Cold War ending and the wall coming down, you know, was there a need for Bond anymore? So we were really under pressure. The series has always had its critics saying they should just stop making James Bond films. He's a relic of the past and out of date. And it's fair to say when people were going into this film in 1995, there was a healthy amount of skepticism in the audience. So the filmmakers knew this opening in particular had to win everyone over. What did they do? Set a world record. Bond does the world's highest bungee jump off a dam to infiltrate a Soviet base. You can actually do this bungee jump for real someday. Yes, this pre-title sequence takes place during the Cold War. Give the audience a Bond adventure of very classic style and era before we begin this modern Bond story. In an homage to Dr. No, Majesties and the Living Daylights, they obscure Bond's face, not revealing him into a punchline. Literally. Beg your pardon, forgot to knock. For the first time, we take a look at the Irish Bond. Brosnan absolutely has the Bond look. When you think of the silhouette, it's Brosnan. He's a mixture of all the Bonds before him. He's got the playfulness of Roger Moore, but tries to lean into the serious elements from Dalton and Connery films. So we get a bit of sneaky Bond with a question. What is he doing here? Then the answer. He's here to meet 006 and destroy the chemical weapons facility. This was so exciting. We'd never seen Bond work alongside a 00 like this. It's fun and new. Plus, Rosden and Sean Bean work great together. The banter between them is real. Fire! Closing time, James. Close to call. I'm your pint. Also, we get to see Brosnan's type of bond here. Yes, it's Colonel Rumos. Come on, with your hands above your heads. Not original. But there's a problem. 006 dies. Once again, Bond is operating on his own. As we've always remembered, Bond is resourceful. So he makes his escape. You can't win. Bond has rigged the bombs. It's time to go. Quick note, I wasn't a huge fan of this score, but the Bond team played on the Timps. It's starting to grow on me. Because it's a long time ago now, people have started to forget how good Brosnan is. He entered the role in a very classic Bond way. From the very start, he was Bond. Look at him. He was born to play James Bond. So Bond drives a motorbike off a cliff to chase the plane so he can escape the USSR. Just about, as the facility blows up. And that's the action-packed nine-minute opening to Goldeneye. This felt like an old-fashioned standalone opening to a Bond film, but little did we know it was setting up the story for the whole film. This sequence leads into a great song sung by Tina Turner and written by two paddies. We're everywhere, especially in this film. Also, if you're interested, you can listen to the demo performed by Bono and the Edge. It's a demo, but when they got Tina Turner, the song was just right. And like this film, it's classic Bond. And that's what the series needed after a six year gap, a return to confidence. I didn't mention this at the start, but Maurice Binder had passed away. So in step Daniel Kleiman to do the titles. We got a slick new gun barrel. Also these titles, they're familiar, but modern and new. They're so iconic. They're on a stamp. It shows the collapse of the Soviet Union after the Cold War, which then leads into the modern era. Or as the film says, 
nine years later. This opening is iconic for a lot of reasons. It's action packed, it sets a world record. It moves into an iconic titles and song. Bond is in Russia. It introduces a new Bond in an old era which we're familiar. Then, before we know it, we're shot into this modern new era of Bond films. And although it's been six years, this is the James Bond you remember. That's what GoldenEye was. Make people have confidence in the series again. I can't say it any better than the main man himself. So? And I just thought, well, it's balls to the wall, really. Just say it and own it as much as you can. My name's Bond. James, James Bond. Hold on to your hat. It's going to be such a fast ride. And it was. So, there you go, everyone. That's how they reintroduced James Bond after a six year gap. But it was more than just that. The world changed in those six years. It'll nearly be six years between Spectre and No Time To Die's release. And I know we're all interested in what they're going to do with the opening of this film. It looks so good. Also, just for my viewers, as of filming this video, if you watch a Bond film every week, you'll have watched them all by the time April 2nd rolls around, which hopefully the new film will be out by then. GoldenEye is definitely a good one to watch. So you can watch them in order or pick out whatever you want to see. I hope you liked this video. You know exactly what to do. Shoot the like button, subscribe to, and I'll see you all next week. Keep safe in the lockdown. Bye. You're expecting someone else?